Good morning. Hope you all are doing really well. And I want to share with you today the power of being willing to get into the minutia of our client's food with, without it becoming not too much about the food, but what really the food is saying. So I'm your host, Tracy Brown. I'm a somatic non-diet dietitian and a tuned eating coach. And you all, a lot of you totally know me and I'm so grateful you're here and you're I just appreciate and love your loyalty and your respect and your willingness to share your your wisdom here too. So you're welcome. Your wisdom is really, really needed here. So thanks for stopping by. So we're going to dive right in. And something that I coach all of my and supervise all my dietitian and coach um, folks on is the power of being able to, to unpack food journals because it is one of the most overlooked but powerful ways that we can help our clients feel really, really seen. So if you hear in the background my dog coughing, he's not dying, but he does have a collapsed trachea, so he's very uncomfortable sometimes, but he's okay. He's got medication, we're all right. Um, so anyway, he's right outside my door begging to get in, that's the issue. But anyway, I digress, interruptions, but what's really important about food journals is that we can take like a day in someone's life and see if we go through like the time and the food and the hunger and fullness, even if it's not accurate hunger and fullness. And we can, and then we can ask like what's happening in their life and what's going on. Either I call it like, what is, if you're not saying like, if people say like, well, there's nothing major going on. I just, I don't feel hungry or there's nothing really bad bothering me right now. I just can't stop the fullness. And then I think I'm out of control. We want to ask like what has been like the flavor of this season of life or what feels like this overhead fluorescent light over us like zzz, that it's like in the background and it might be in your clients total unconscious and they don't really understand what it is that's bothering them there's just something there or it could be that they kind of know but they're being people pleasers so they're pushing that down they're pushing their needs down and they can't, it will pop into their consciousness and maybe that's when they restrict or binge. Um, or maybe it kind of doesn't and they keep themselves busy and they kind of go on. But being able to locate that and share that with them live is incredibly impactful. It's almost like you give them a piece of their own wisdom to them, like by going through those journals and it helps them feel really seen. Here's my experience and I couldn't figure out this and you help me see it. And so that's my little nugget of, of um, experience and wisdom for you today is don't be afraid. If you have are recognizing that you're spinning in circles with a client or um, and I want to really encourage my coach friends here is that I know a lot of people don't want to deal with the food, but their clients are struggling um, with feeling out of control with their eating and feeling nothing, nothing's working. I highly recommend if you don't want to explore the food with them, refer them on to a person who can decode that like a, you know, me or some other nine diet dietitian who wants to do that work or please learn how to do that because I don't, you don't, you're not providing medical nutrition therapy if you're just looking through somebody's food and hunger and fullness. Um, you know, there's a line there and we can explore that. There are people who do life coaching and health coaching, you know, that do make suggestions about food and it's, it's fine to be really, really curious about, um, how a food is, is is impacting them and so i really encourage my coach friends here that i work with many coaches and i'm encouraging them look at the food um, it may not be something you do every session that's fine but it's really important for you to have like you have a pulse on what's happening for them a dietitian we might do that more regularly but honestly in fact i'm currently working with a person and we'll really work on health advocacy and body image and mobility so the truth is like I have an idea what her food looks like and we need to circle back to it. But the last two or three sessions have really been about those other needs that she that she has. But we will circle back around to the food because I still think that it is making an impact somewhat on um, just the overall picture of things. But it's a more minor one. But I only knew that because you know, she didn't want to really talk about food, but I needed to get in there to understand what was happening. And I come to find out, I did see a little bit of like, there's no binging, there's not only restriction, there's only a minor amount of guilt about the food she's eating, and there's a mild amount of like overriding fullness. But I needed to know that. And so we can kind of come circle back around that when some of these other things have got more 
have gotten more um, relief, more containment. So there's more spaciousness in our system and to feel like these things are going to get resolution. So even if there's a client that you're feeling like, I don't, her food's fine, every once in a while go check back on it because I think it's important. And if, they, if you're the opposite spectrum watching this, you're like, all I ever do is look at the food. And you feel like that that's spinning and you're not getting through with the, um, the body image or they're getting stuck on some other topic. And you're wanting to too much focus on like exactly how much they're eating. And I am making this video. Oh, this week is basically based on some cl complaints of clients I've heard from. Uh, like I have some clients who have discussed their interactions with other professionals. And this is dog and people. It's just that we all have different expertise and different experiences. But I want to provide solutions for my clients and I want to help you have solutions for your clients. So, you know, I have many people that come to me and like, well, my dietitian is great, but all we ever do is like look at my food journals and then that's it. Like, I don't really feel that looked at or seen or heard. Um, and so you can look at somebody's food, but what does it mean? What does it say about your client and where they're at in their journey? What does it say about if their needs are getting met, are we unpacking their, they might be like people like I'm doing every three hours and I'm eating perfectly from hunger and fullness or not, or I'm following a meal plan, but the whole time they're white knuckling. I'm not a fan of white knuckling. There are a few people that I work with occasionally that just need to stick with a meal plan fairly long-term for all kinds of other reasons. Um, but that's still not the long-term goal. It's just longer than we'd all like, but that's what their system, that's about all their system can handle. They need that much containment. But for the most part, people are like itching to get off meal plans or even itching to like stop doing food journals, all that kind of stuff. We all want our autonomy and freedom and independence. And the quicker you can get in there and help them at the rate that their system can handle, the more successful they're going to be. And you're going to feel really empowered as well. So thank you all so much for watching. I meant to make this like two minutes. Now we're at minute seven. But I appreciate that. Oh, Ashley, I'm getting ready to hop off. Um, please go back and watch the beginning. I think you'll enjoy it. Um, but if you have any questions, please tag me. And I'll come back and answer your questions. So thanks so much and take care. Bye. Oh, and one last thing. My um, Peace with Food um, forum slash Attuning for Tune Living Academy is open for clients that just can't afford any of our one-on-one -on -one services, um, who need support in between sessions, who need some peer support. Um, and I also do a lot of Q&A in there as well. So if it's $25 a month, I, you know, this is one of my main missions with this work is to provide some accessible care and, but not just like, okay, here's some info and figure it out. It's like, I'm, I'm really involved in it. So um, it's really important. And I'll put a link down here so you all know about it. Not that I'm trying to get you to, I don't want you to lose your clients because of this, but I think it's a really good adjunct for people that feel alone and need some people to talk to. If in their, besides you, maybe their therapist or coach, they don't have anybody else. So this is what this is for too. And I tend to only attract really loving, kind, sensitive people. And there's no snark allowed in this group. So um, I kind of, I'm not even too that worried about that's going to be an issue. So I haven't been overly policing the last 24 hours what's going on in that. So Kelly, good morning. Please watch from the beginning. Um, if you have any questions, tag me and I'll talk to you all real soon. Take care.